Well, my guests today are two wildly talented Emmy award-winning producers and storytellers. They are co-founders of Stupid Buddy Studios, which has brought us among many other projects. Of course, Robot Chicken. A big welcome to Matt Senreich and John Harvatine. Gents, welcome to Comic Book Central. I'm just going to pronounce my last name well. You, you, you are <laughs> above everyone else. <laughs> yeah. One one takes Superman. That's that's what Matt, they call me. This is the big I leagues. It. I <laughs> don't I do not mess around. Uh my friends, I don't know I if really people agree. can see this or not, but that Marvel hat says it all and I love it. Uh we get look if you're watching the YouTube version, I look, I, I get sometimes I get a little sneaky with the Easter eggs. We'll talk about eggs in a in a little bit here. I know you got something going on with eggs. Uh, but if you're watching on the YouTube, I do have some Mego action going on behind me. I got a Mego shirt going on. You gents know a little something about Mego, so we're going to talk Never about that. Look, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> the cease and desist came in already? Okay. Before we get to, uh, look, I want an origin story for both of you, but uh, let's talk eggs. Let's uh, get a preview of the latest project that you've got going on. Uh, and as we record this, I think you both got some good news recently, right? Arf. We owe Matt. Uh, congratulations. I believe his Von Dingles is fully funded as of today. Yep. Congratulations, uh, I was excited man. to say, yes, this, that, uh, that this was a Kickstarter, Kickstarter that went out Kickstarter and it was funded. Yep. And it, uh, it, it ended up reaching its goal today, which is very exciting. Uh, yeah. Two weeks ahead, though, right? So you can still get money. Yes. Yes. To more money. So where do we send money? This is a, your upcoming project. So first of all, where do we send the money? How do we, how do we give you more of our money? <laughs> Harv? Well, it's uh, I guess you type in the Von Dingles on Kickstarter. That's where we are. And uh, yeah, we're, there's extra tiers that are going to be happening as the, I mean, not as the money rolls in, but there's more <laughs> rewards and things like that. Uh, so yeah, I think it's worth checking out. I love the project. Okay. What is this is like, so, you know, these are like, so when you have Easter eggs, if I understand right, so you get Easter, like they, you hide them all over the place. Right. And kids like you hide a hundred of them and yeah. like, they find like 97 of them. What happens to those other three, right? Is that the is that yeah. the, the elevator pitch? Yeah, I mean, that's basically, honestly, it came from when I was a kid. And when I would have like Easter egg hunts, I always wondered what happens to the ones that you didn't find. And being maybe a little young and foolish, I just imagined that they would grow arms and legs and faces and they would waddle off somewhere and reproduce and start their own little family and uh, world together. And this is kind of, imagining if that world actually happened and there was a little area where these little egg people were repopulating and starting to come into our world what do they do too far like ahead. what do they can you uh, well you know that's a spoiler alert um but can you tell us what they do are they spoiled no you know <laughs> I, I think the best way to give the analogy is it, it kind of has a, a smurfs like vibe where they have their own little community mm. you know, hidden in the woods or it's like Frogger Rock, you know, behind the wall, like they have their own little world. It's that same sensibility where it's like, here are these things, these items that nobody's paid attention to that's created a community. And what is that community and the adventure that they go on in, in that, in that, uh, with these- Is there a Gargamel? Is there like a, an adversary that, that comes after the eggs and wants to scramble them and- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yeah, if we go well... that, that egg punny but um, <laughs> that's all. I'm all about the puns. I'm all about You're the nailing puns. them. They're doing good. <laughs> um, but yes, there is a uh, an evil egg uh, that uh, has gone right. through a different path than some of these others may have. A bad egg. He's a bad. bad there's egg. always a bad egg. <laughs> always a bad egg. Now the Kickstarter. So there is a there's an a, there's an animated short right that's out there. So you can see that at the yeah. Kickstarter page. But the Kickstarter was for a comic book, right? So I look, it's Comic Book Central. Yeah, you know. Yeah some love for comic books tell us a little bit about that like what's what's behind that what do we expect how do these tie in and what's the is 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 there more beyond the comic book i mean does that yeah. does that come to life I, even more yeah i'll start it off mac and clean it up basically this started in between seasons of robot chicken crossing swords the tv shows that we were producing and we had an idea to produce these shorts with these egg characters and at the time it was really thinking more of what would happen from the eggs perspective of like an egging of a house like we all we all still egg people's houses i assume so what's the perspective of the egg what does the egg go through uh so we made a little short and we loved making it it was really fun and from that we created a story that was even bigger but the problem is in stop motion 
that would be a lot of money to create such a big story and adventure. Uh, we put our heads together and it took a little while, but we came up with the idea of a graphic novel where we could really expand the world and really show what these eggs can do. So the graphic novel was the perfect uh, expression of the story that we wanted to create. Okay, and so we'll eventually see that hopefully brought to life uh, in, in sort of a robot chicken fashion. What? Um, so it's met the goal. So the the graphic novel's on the way. What? When can we expect this to to be hitting shelves? Hitting you know people order it, they get it. Like when when can we expect that? I think that's July, if I'm not incorrect. Um, yeah, I know, I know it's over the summer. I don't know if we yeah, have any date, but but it's being worked on um, as we speak. So it's 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 going well. That's not bad. And again, it's another a couple of weeks and people can keep going to it. Um, here's the thing. You, know, you think about CGI, you know, these days and, and everything. It just it, it's it's kind of tough because a lot of the stuff I'm watching now just feels like a video game, you know, um, yeah. when you get into it. And it's almost like now there's CGI overload. But I sort of grew up on uh, Ray Harryhausen and, and Phil Tippett. And, the, you know, oh, I didn't grow up on King Kong, obviously, you know, or th things like that. But it's like you see these things and we always are RoboCop. I mean, uh, you know, things like that. And it was like mm -hmm. I, you can't, I remember Empire Strikes Back, you know, and it was like the, you know, the ad ads going. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like there, there was some heft to it. There yeah. was shadowing. There was I mean, yeah, yeah, you could if you look too close. you can <laughs> Right, they, right. But like were those. Were those your inspirations growing up? Like, what what did you guys think of stop motion? What what were the ones that, that you were attracted to? Because that that's sort of become your niche at this point. Yeah, well, I'd say working backwards from that answer, I think there's something to the you know the um, the VFX from the 80s and the 70s and even early 90s where it doesn't feel like anything can happen and it's just crazy fake CGI. There's a kind of a tactile like probable nature to things where you they're limited in scope. And I think when that happens, it feels a little more approachable. So I, I'm really, I really like that a lot. But as far as what got me started, I mean, Star Wars was a big thing, you know, the uh, effects in Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back. But then even like the Rankin Bass, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer characters were, you know, exciting for me as a kid. Matt, how about you? Yeah, for me, I, it's it's kind of a reverse sensibility for me where it always starts with what's the story and the best way to tell it. Um, you know, for me, when we were coming up with the idea of Robot Chicken, it was a very simple concept of you wanted your toys come, to come to life um, and tell sketch. It was sketch comedy with action figures. Um, and that was always what we wanted to do. And that required it to be stop motion. So for Seth and I, we love stop motion, but we had no idea how to make it. And we had to figure out the way to do it. And we learned very quick. And through that process, you get to see what you're capable of and what, you know, requires, you know. A little bit of a uh, you know sneak arounds, um, but you know it co it costs money to make these things, and you got to be smart in how you pr how you produce it. And I think that's the thing. Like the generation right now just sees so many. Like you make a Marvel movie, and it's just like you can you can literally just pump these things out every couple of weeks. I, th I think even what the recent Flash movie, some of the designers were like, we had a couple of weeks to crank <laughs> certain effects out, and we did it, and it looks like it. Um, <laughs> but can you tell because there is that that sort of tangible something that's going on can you talk to, uh, about how, just how difficult that art form is when you yeah. go to it because there is something about say yeah you could create anything but you could you could knock down 17 buildings in a row but there's no there's nothing to it there's i'm not connected yeah. to it well it's really weird and you know i feel like you feel I mean, that sounds kind of silly, but I feel like you feel the pain and the love that each artist has in a stop motion project from the designer to the person that makes the sets and paints the sets and the puppets and makes the puppets. Like there's such, you know, texture that's put into everything that I think all along the filmmaking process, you feel it. Uh, whereas like in a CG thing, it's just, it feels like it's a video game where there's, there's no stakes. Anything is possible, anything can happen. And I think you lose some of the gravity and gravity is actually a thing in stop motion that we fight. So we we literally fight gravity when we do stop motion. And I, I don't know, there's something to that. Like there's something to the struggle of the creation that just makes it feel a little more real. I don't know what the secret sauce of it is, but it, it definitely feels tangible. Well, if something's in the air of flying, like you you can't just go fly, right? Like you can't just type in fly or have. No, yeah. No. <laughs> I know yeah. those 
CGI designers, I know I'm reducing their job. Right. We're not description. Little, <laughs> right. I know. <laughs> my apologies to anybody that does yeah. that. But when you do it, like you have to actually do something. Like it, yeah, whether it's suspended. It, yeah. Yeah. They're on a rig that you're going to have to paint out at some point, you know, when it gets into visual effects. Um, cause there are aspects of visual effects that need to happen. Um, but it's, it's, it's just different kinds because the actual movement itself or the depth of the set, you know, the shadows are real of these characters, the lighting, um, that that's all. Yeah. Like, like Harv keeps saying the word tangible, they're tangible. Yeah. And even things like, you know, let's say you got the thing suspended. You still have to light it without being aware of the shadows. You have to physically move it. So there's still like lots of steps to do other than just hanging something really heavy. And I think every step is where an artist goes in and just makes it feel as real as possible. So the weight just feels more authentic. That, you know, that makes sense because if you're in an outdoor scene and it's like the the character or the object pivots from one area to the other, that you've got the sun is going to be, yes. Yeah, so you, I mean, you guys take in all that. Uh, Matt, you worked for Wizard Magazine back in the day, correct? I did, yes. <laughs> I'm going back a little bit for everybody that oh, remembers okay. Wizard Magazine. But <laughs> and if you again, if you're watching the the YouTube version, I, the Toy Fair, right? That was the offshoot, right? Yeah. Is this yeah. where it all started? Um, yeah, I guess so. It's like Twisted Miko. It was Twisted Theater? Miko Theater before I changed to Twisted Toy Fair Theater. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was one of those situations where I'd met Seth through Toy Fair Magazine. Seth Green, who Seth couldn't Green. be here today, so we we can make fun of him for not being here. <laughs> oh, yeah. We could say and all bets are off, Anything. right? Yeah, anything. <laughs> He'll kill me. Um, <laughs> I have no problem. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm safe in Columbus, Ohio, so I'm good. There you go. Uh, <laughs> hey, look, you're, you're where a lovely toy company used to be. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it's it was one of those things where he was a big fan of the magazine. You know, I was a fan of his. I read, um, I think it was an Entertainment Weekly, that he customized action figures for his cast of Buffy as a uh, Christmas present. And I thought that would be an interesting article for Toy Fair. And when I reached out, um, he really geeked out. Like he was <laughs> big of a fan of our magazine. Okay. We just became friends after that. And it, he liked the stuff that we did. But one day he was going on Conan O'Brien. He had nothing, quote unquote, to talk about. Uh, he said, wouldn't it be cool if my figure from Buffy or Austin Powers came to life and hung out with, there was a um, Conan O'Brien 12-inch uh, figure that he had made. Maybe we'll get it and we'll make a little animated short. And I was like, he's like, you know how to write that stuff. I'm like, yeah, but I have no idea how to produce it. He's like, well, figure, <laughs> it, out. figure it out. And yeah, uh, writing is one thing, bringing it to life is another. That's exactly what happened. And so as we started to put that wow. thing together, um, yeah, people started to reach out. It was Sony Digital that actually was like, here's money, go make some stuff. And we're like, wow. oh. were you the, you pitched it? Off uh, your... no, we, we didn't even pitch at the time they came to us i don't know how they heard of it um and uh yeah it was it was dial up that they were looking to do this for that shows you how long ago it was <laughs> so what, what's dial up exactly it's like <laughs> we had to call into the internet um so, <laughs> I, should, I should drop the sound effect in right there but did, they, <laughs> did this one again if you're in. if you're watching the youtube video I'm home, is this the, did this one get you a cease and desist from dc comics the super friends I don't remember. Is that terrible? Okay. I don't yeah. know. There's a myth out there. I don't know if it's myth legend. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think there was ever I'm not sure there was ever a cease and desist. Um okay. Was, yeah, I don't think there might have been a Wikipedia. Like, yeah, it might have been like a hey, we don't want you doing that. That might have yeah. happened. Um, but yeah, I don't think there was anything official like, hey, okay. Because that would have ruined the relationship for all the magazines and like <laughs> They still did DC stuff in like Wizard at the time. So I don't know. Yeah, you were selling their toys. Yeah. yeah and cut exactly. cut two years later when like your DC stuff is winning Emmy Awards. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly how that that was that was above my pay grade, that stuff. <laughs> what was the what was the one toy that was toughest to secure? Uh and what or maybe one that you overpaid for? Or what was the oh, toughest one you went? We gotta question. do this. Oh god. Oh, no. I don't know the answer to that one. Um, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember what I got. Seth asked for three three things. Oh, he wanted an Uncle Bob from, um, oh God, what was the name of that movie? Uh, the Black Hole. <laughs> oh no, or something like that. Yeah, like 
a Bob figure from like that was a tough one to get. But again, it was okay. all before the internet when I was getting this stuff. So that's that's yeah. what made it tough. You know, for Robot Chicken at the time, it was um we needed a um oh god, I can't even remember what these figures are. It was like a night rider uh thing. Yeah, it, it's oh, we need the Batmobile. That was what it was, Amigo Batmobile. <clears throat> okay. And trying to find that was a, a complete nightmare. And we found one and it was like this woman who it was like a grandma who had it from her son or grandson and was like, just take good care of it. <laughs> so you're it. you're tracking down like real people at that point. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, not like before, collectors. Or... Early days of Robot Chicken before the Internet. Yeah. Wow. It was like, we had to really find this stuff. Um, and I still wow. remember that one. And as soon as we had it, we were making it. I still remember we had to destroy it for the sketch. And I just remember us feeling really guilty. And I called Seth, who was in on a movie like in Europe somewhere. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, man, I just want to let you know we got to smash it with a hammer." <laughs> <laughs> did you? T- you? But did you tell Nana? Like, no, no, no I told, well, she's finding out. He knew now. what Nana said. <laughs> he knew what Nana said, and we were all not happy. And we're, wow, got to be a way around this. I'm like, I've tried all of it. We've talked about all of it. <laughs> wow. That's amazing because so, now you just like you know go on eBay and there's probably probably sure a there's thousand of them. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's yeah. you guys were doing it, man. This is like beyond old school. Yeah. Um, you you got you both got to work with everybody. I mean, that's pretty safe to say. But who who's the one or maybe like top three that you're like, wait a minute, they're wait they're coming in to do a voice. That Everyone. wait, I get to meet this person. Who, this is a popular who that, what's that list? It's a popular question and, and it always changes depending on when you ask. Um, Cause I was actually- This is after lunch, questions. Matt. I know it is after lunch. <laughs> this is t- t- today, um, I guess. You know, one of the top ones still to this day is George Lucas for me, cause yeah. he was always an idol. And the fact that it led to me being able to work with him in a much larger sense goes a really long way. And yeah, and, and that, that above and beyond um, has established a friendship that I still to this day adore. Um, but I was just thinking this question before lunch. Um, Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise is one that really made a difference for me. <laughs> so wow. um, having them in the studio at the same time <laughs> and watching them interact, because, um, yeah, it was really just a playful day. Um, and they were so joyful together. I mean, Burt started us doing shots in the morning. It was like 9 a.m., it was like it was a it was a whole thing um and it really does make me smile thinking back at that one um yeah. that's hard to top it is it is another one that i still love to this day is um i really like zach efron <laughs> <laughs> he's one that i you know he's such a pleasure he always brings joy into the room i don't know also made my daughter really happy you know, like i don't know it just that yeah. counts that goes a long really way happy <laughs> so. john who's on your top list who's the one that uh, you're just like whoa who's coming in today yeah <clears throat> well my favorite is d snyder of twisted sister <laughs> <laughs> he came in and did the voice on our von dingle short and it was amazing because he's such a humble guy but he's also a big rock star and he shows up outside our studio in a i don't even know what kind of car it was that's how fancy it was <laughs> like it's like one of one you know some fancy <laughs> thing with crazy paint job and you know, he comes in dressed like a rock star with all of this jewelry and, you know, Still, like just 2023, this like, yeah, yeah, live full life. on. Yeah, it's amazing. Wow. And that velvet, velvet hammer of a voice of his just knocking it through. He did a narrator for the short and then uh, like a sergeant character. And they both were wow. different, but both had that like real D growl and just working with him and, you know, watching him do his voice and just switching it on just an instant was just a real pleasure so that's, that's good work that's if you can get it yeah good work if you can get it that's uh favorite toy each of you own and uh is it within reach you know oh, I, oh mine is i know yeah. yours is. grab our, it our, i'm literally packing to go into the office we're moving offices so all right. i picked up all my toys just the other day Oh, Any remember those? Well, if you again, if you're watching the YouTube channel, you can see it. <laughs> Tell us what that is, John. Uh, you know, the Dick Tracy toys were the last ones that I collected and kind of played with when I was a kid. But it's I the never Warren was Beatty, able to find... Warren Beatty ish movie, 1990 ish yeah. era, right? Yeah, I was disappointed. Okay. I was a big Batman fan, and then Dick Tracy came out like that next summer, 
and I thought it was going to be really cool and exciting like Batman and I was pretty disappointed but I still got all the figures but this blank figure I couldn't get and I never understood where it was like what the deal was and it turns out the movie didn't do great the character gave away the ending of the movie I won't give away the ending of the movie and so it was only sold in Canada so it was something I wanted for a long time and I chased it down like 10 years ago uh so that's one of my favorites 33 years right spoiler here. alerts don't week. exist spoiler alerts don't exist after 33 years <laughs> yeah, um yeah. matt you got what do you got you know mine it's it's what's sentimental to me i have a few um for me the first one i always go to it's based now on robot chicken it's our emperor character so that original um emperor from and again it's not the the original emperor that uh was in the uh, star wars figures back in the day um is still one that i i have on my on my uh stand if you will over here um that just got packed up um migo spidey will always hold yeah. a deep place in my heart cute um, yep goes back away classic well that it's was the, most of the Mega the twisted toy fair theater it was like migo spidey and migo hulk right yeah. <laughs> I, I attribute a lot of that to uh to pat mccallum and um and uh tom root uh, and Doug Goldstein, who really made those come to life. So, um, and Seth MacFarlane, the uh, uh, voice of the Emperor, right? Yes. Yeah. He, so yeah. that would probably that goes a long he changed, way. He changed that uh, that character for me forever. Like that will be my favorite uh, animated character of all time. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go speed round. I know we got a few minutes yeah. left here. Um, yeah. Favorite favorite moments on Modoc. Um, working with Patton Oswalt, I had a chance to talk to him about the show. Favorite moments on that. Oh boy, this this isn't going to be a, a speed round. Um, speed round. You know, I, I, I love working with Jordan, who I've known forever as well. Like they just brought joy walking into the office anytime they did. Um, yeah, it just was a, a sillier show than we'd ever anticipated. And the fact that Marvel let us do it, God bless. Yeah, I think when we figured out we were going to go stop motion or 2D or CG with it, I think when we went stop motion with it, that was really exciting. So that was my favorite moment. Yeah, yeah and also that... to go one step further, the fact that there's a 2D version of uh, test that exists is is also exciting. So yeah. we'll have to... is that out there? Is that yeah, out I there? don't know if it's out there, but we did one. So I don't know if Marvel is going to. So you'll put it on your website, right? At leagueofbuddies.com. You'll put that as soon as we're done here. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll, we'll talk to that Marvel team and see what they say. You have the hat. You have the connection. Ask ask for forgiveness, not for permission. Yeah, yeah. You guys should know this by now. I like that. Um, go ahead. Good, ahead, John. Oh no! I said I like that. I like your your strategy there. Oh, always. That's yeah. I build a career on that. Um, what other <laughs> obscure comic book characters do you got to tackle? What what what? Who's next? We have to tackle like to... yeah. Stop motion like Modoc. So like you you got to dig deep in the in the quarter bins. Who, oh, who would pull out? <laughs> That's, that's a hard question i'm looking at li like literally looking at my marvel universe poster on the wall oh uh, <laughs> well okay it, not that he's obscure out. but howard the duck um well oh, howard yeah, the duck ties that. into that that seth green guy um yeah that guy so, yeah somehow <laughs> he's not here to voice and be that person um yeah i don't know that's a right. that's a tough one um i like I just, everybody i, I just I, do what i can yeah, maybe i'll do a what uh, <laughs> one day I just do what I can. Uh, you guys got to build uh, costumes for the Masked Singer. What <laughs> best yeah. best part about the being on the Masked Singer contributing? Uh, uh, having to sneak the the people who are in those suits in here to then yeah. customize it to their body shapes without getting and not caught. telling anyone. All right, it wasn't Rudy Giuliani, was it? No comment. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, Star Wars detours. Anything updates? Um. No, uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. I think, you know, right. the fact that we did something and to answer that, the fact that we did something with those characters, um, you know, that was in a different direction from where they're going. It just it's it's sad. But Wait, that's not an update. Yeah, I know. That's uh, it. I know Seth's kind of like a want wah and Matt's kind of like a want wah And but there's 39 episodes sitting in a, on the hard drive. There are when when maybe when and Disney well, hold on Disney wait decide. Disney Plus has Lego Star Wars Holiday Special yeah Paramount well, I, Plus has put it on the, the website, lower man. decks you ready here's my answer to that and I all do right it. here we go the fact right. that Luke Skywalker has a different personality and you know Leia may have a different personality like the fact that we gave different personality types to these characters I think is a big deal so 2024 right sure. 
Yeah. We got the Von Dingles that's coming out. Let's uh, give you more money. Let's get the, the graphic novel out there is coming out. Uh, more to come. What's after that? What's next? More, do any more Robot Chicken? Um, now that the lovely um, strike is over, I can start talking about it. So we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. What do you uh, got? What's uh, Robot Chicken, right? More Robot Chicken? Yeah, we just did a, over the, the time, we just did a lovely Pop-Tarts commercial. We're talking to them right now about some other stuff. Yeah, there's, we're, we're working. Love Pop-Tarts. Yeah, Leagueofbuddies.com, right? Yeah, uh, that's us. Yeah, that's us. You guys do everything. And social media, where are you at? Um, What is our... <laughs> X, Twitter, I don't even know what it is. Are you guys... Where are you? We're Stupid Buddy Studios or... Uh... Our little Von Dingles are at the Von Dingles on Instagram. Yeah. All yeah. right. We'll go. We'll go visit Matt John. Congratulations. Uh, wow. Two weeks, uh, you know, in and you and you got it done. Uh, hopefully, more on the way. Yeah. Yell at yell at Seth for not joining us today. Just <laughs> scream in the other room. <laughs> I wish he was in the other room. Look, you can see his box. Look, this is his boxes over there. He's it the is. He is not there. That's for sure. Yeah, we'll have him on exactly. at some point. Proof he's not there. Uh, exactly. Look, yeah, I'll prove he's not here. You, Look, all you guys are keeping. Wall. You guys are keeping <laughs> stop motion animation alive, and we love that. We we absolutely love it. And you've put humanity into those toys. Everything that's that's behind me. You've put the human. You've made us care about them on a different level. So, thank you for doing that, and thank you so much for joining me on Comic Book Central. Thanks for having. Yeah, us. thank you for having us. Yeah. Sure.